Is your acting career on autopilot? Are you just coasting along in this thing or are you taking inspired action? Let's talk about it on this next episode of the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. What's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. Welcome back to another episode of the Hollywood Bound Actors Podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. If you're listening on the podcast audio only, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, what's up replay watchers? Love you guys. I want to talk about this, you know, and this is really for actors of multiple stages and seasons of our career. This could be, you've been acting for a few years, or this could be, you've been, this is your 10th, 15th, 20th year in the acting business. Business. And what's on my mind today is about being on autopilot. Now, there are so many ways we can be on autopilot in our lives, right? Just every day. Also, um, in our career, as it, when it pertains to reaching our goals, so many things. What I was really thinking about as I thought about my own career in my own life, which is how I usually come up with these topics, you know, I'm not pointing the finger, I'm asking myself some questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm taking you along on the ride. So that's what this episode is going to be about. And I'm just, I'm looking at my notes. I have a few things I just want you to think about today. Ponder on, journal about these, but start to ask yourself, I want you to first take inventory of where you are right now. Now you may be a full-time actor, like you do nothing else to earn your income except act. You probably like a lot of us out here who are doing multiple things. I think it's imperative in this day and age that we have multiple streams of income, multiple ways to get that money, especially after having writers and actor strikes and then a pandemic and all these things. We have realized how vulnerable we can be in this industry. I know I have. Maybe you can relate. Say I can relate. Um, so you may be working one or two other jobs in addition to being an actor, having some side hustles. Maybe you're an entrepreneur on the side. Um, I can certainly relate to all of those things. But you're still here. You're still an actor. You are still putting in those auditions. You are still calling yourself an actor. You are still investing the energy, the time, the, the heart space to, to be in this industry. And, and I don't take that lightly. I mean, I love being an actor. It is what I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. I'm, I'm grateful. I can actually say that I am living my dream. Now, the dream looks different on some days. <laughs> the dream looks a bit more fluid on some days. And some days I question the dream, but I am living the dream. The thing that I said I wanted to do as a kid, I don't know about you, um, but I am. But there comes a point in our careers where we have to ask ourselves, are we just coasting? You know, I love watching television and film. You all know that if you've been following the podcast for a while, you know, I study TV like it's my job. I watch movies that uh, I just get so inspired by. Um, I was just recently watching Maestro with Bradley Cooper and I was like, Bradley Cooper where? Like, I don't even see him. Like I was so like blown away by his performance and his transformation. And I was like, man, to do work like that is such a treat. I, also recently been watching a show called Black Cake on Hulu and just, oh, uh, mm, chef's kiss with some of the performances. And it made me ask myself, well, are you headed in the direction that you desire to go? Or are you simply waiting? And that's what I want to present to you today. So first things first, when was the last time you asked yourself what you want? Because what I know is the top of one mountain is the bottom of another. Meaning when you were first starting out and, and maybe acting with such a faraway dream, just getting a speaking role was the top of a mountain, right? Maybe you started doing background work and then you got a speaking line. You had two words and that was the top of a mountain. But then you realize, oh shoot, now I'm at the bottom of another one because I want more and I want more. Thank you more, please. Thank you more, please. And so I don't know if you've done this in a while, but when was the last time you took inventory now for where you are right now, as you listen to this podcast, what do you want next? It's okay to want more. I think it's natural. It's healthy for us to set goals, reach them, set goals, reach them because, you know, even in that process, it can make us, sometimes we can forget how much we have accomplished, how far we have come. So I think it's important to take inventory of what we have done already, but I think it's necessary to check in and be like, okay, 
what do I want next? Other than just hoping an email comes in from my agent or my manager that I have something to take today. Like, what are you calling forth next? When was the last time you asked yourself? And you haven't, I, you can use these prompts to work through this. You know, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. The next thing I want you to ask yourself is, have you just gotten used to the rat race? Like, I know for me, it can be kind of addictive to feel the adrenaline of, you You know, you go from no auditions, like it's been really slow for me right now in this moment at the time of this recording, but like you can go from nothing happening to five things happening at once, three auditions are due tomorrow, and then there's the adrenaline pumping, and oh my gosh, I just booked it, I gotta be on set tomorrow, I have a fitting, like that kind of adrenaline becomes a rush and becomes this kind of rat race thing that we are just waiting, you know, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. But then I have to, you know, have to ask yourself, what is the end goal? What is your true measure of success? I have to be honest, my true measure of success has changed over the years. Again, I remember working, you know, two jobs years ago and thinking my true measure of success was getting a guest star role on a television show because I didn't know anything about how TV pay worked. And I would see people doing guest stars and they would pop up here and there. They were me now. And I remember thinking, ooh, when I get a guest star, I can quit my jobs. If I only knew, if I knew then what I know now. Um, so your measure of success, I guarantee you has changed. But when was the last time you asked yourself what that new measure is? Is it just a far away place of, I wanna win an Oscar one day? Or is it, I want to be able to pay my bills with ease just from acting? I don't know. You have to make that up for yourself. And I guarantee you how you started is not where you are now. And I think unless we really know what our true measure of success is, how do we know when we've reached it? Like, how, what are we working toward? You know, I've heard myself say in interviews and joking and not joking that I'm going to do this till I'm a Cicely Tyson this thing. Like, I'm just going to be doing this till it's done. I don't really know if that's true or not. I, I love acting, but I don't really know where my life will take me in 25 years. God willing, I'm around. I don't know. So to me, doing it to the wheels fall off, honestly, is no longer my true measure of success. Now, if I just desire it because it's fun, but I don't want to have to do it. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to act because my social security ain't, ain't enough. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm, look, I'm sitting in these questions with you. You know how I am. I, I'm, I like to be very transparent. And I think these are questions we should ask. So in a lot, in a, in a, what goes with that next is me asking, when was the last time you challenged yourself? Like, what are you prepping for next? I will give you an example of something that did come as a full manifestation for me. And I shared this on a few podcast episodes ago. Uh, for the past couple of years, I, I had a, a personal trainer, shout out to Zimzon Zion. We're not working together at this moment, but I did work with him for a couple of years. And during that time, you know, I got in shape. I started just be getting healthier. And we would talk about, you know, me doing maybe some kind of action stuff one day and, you know, just being ready. We would practice my boxing stance and um, and I would do interviews and speak about wanting to do some sci fi, wanting to do something that was kind of a badass role. And that got to be manifested for me this year. And for me, I can look back and see the preparation that led to that. I can also see how I spoke life into that and how it came to be. So I'm asking you. What are you preparing yourself for next? I don't believe it can just be waiting, hoping that a dream role comes to your phone, that a C mail comes in and that's the role. That's the thing that changes your life. It could, but there's no, con there's no control in that. There's, it's just, it's just hurry up. It's just hurry up and wait. It's just waiting. So I want you to ask yourself, what do you want to do next? What are you prepping for next? And if you really, if you're looking at me right now or listening, you're like, Christine, I don't know what the hell I'm prepping for next. I'm just hoping I get an audition. 
there's nothing wrong with that because I'm sure there's a lot. You're not alone. I'm sure if there's some comments, if you comment below in this video, let people know you're not alone, right? But I challenge you to challenge yourself and think about what would you want to do next? Does your character speak another language? Do they have a dialect? Do they have a special skill that you need to learn? Who do you need to become to be ready for the thing that you're calling for next? I think that's such a powerful question. One that I've learned in my years of doing like personal development and, you know, listening to so many, you know, personal development gurus, you know, but who do you have to become to have and do what you want to do next? You can say you want to be a badass uh, action hero, but boo, are you, are you working out? Are you lifting weights? Are you, are you stretching? <laughs> are you training? Because honey, when it shows up, you got to be ready. You know, when the opportunity comes, get, it's too late to get ready. Right? So something to think about. Something else I want to have a few more I want you to think about. And, uh, and if, if you're finding this helpful, please let me know in the comments. You can leave a, a comment and let me know. And if you need some help just brainstorming or get, you know, getting your energy right, you may want to check out my book. If you don't know, I have a book called Playing Small, The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet. It's really all about getting your mind right. And I think the more we get our mind right in every area of our life, Things will change. Things will shift. Everything changes with when we change our thoughts. So you can get my book on Audible if you want to hear me talk, or you can get it on Amazon. But I think it's a quick read, and uh, I think it'll be really impactful if you don't have it already. And if you have the book, leave me a review, okay, on Amazon and Audible. I need them reviews, some five-star reviews. Um, something else I want you to ask yourself is if you are, if you happen to be represented right now, meaning you have an agent or a manager or both. Does your team represent your trajectory? Does your team represent where you are headed? If you do have an idea of where you want to go next, what you want to do next, do you think your team can get you there? Like, I think my team can get, we've had some, we've had some great things that have happened. I'm sure there are bigger, there are bigger teams out there, bigger names for sure. And I think you grow Sometimes your team, your team needs to change as you grow and evolve. Certain, you know, certain agents get you to a point and then you need to let them go and get another agent. You know, some agents are just for co-stars and then you graduate to the, a bigger agent and you graduate from there. That's why celebrities, big name celebrities, a lot of them have these big, 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 big agencies because they've graduated up to that for various reasons. But look at your own team. And if you don't have a team, as you prep to get one, make sure that they can get you where you want to go. But you won't know that unless you know where you want to go and you have your own set of goals. Uh, another one, I have three more, a couple more things for you. So we talked about the team and look, our team does, they don't run a nonprofit. Okay. They're here to get the checks. They're here to get you to audition for things, for you to book it when we get the percentage so they can keep the lights on. So when you get auditions, you know, a lot of times everything may, be, may not be for you. Your team is just fielding offers, right? So are the auditions and the roles you accept in alignment with the vision that you have for your future? And again, this depends on what season you're in. You may be in what I call stacking season, which is just, I need any role, any role, any role. Don't matter, don't matter, don't matter. Don't matter what I say, what I'm on. I just want to collect these roles. I've been there. That's how I stacked my first 15 credits. It was like whatever, whoever, whatever channel, movie, TV show. Yes. But you elevate, you graduate. And I just want you to make sure that you're not saying yes to everything if it's not in alignment with where you want to go next something to think about. But unless you know where you want to go next, you'll just keep saying yes to everything and then wonder why the dream role hasn't come yet. Wonder why the industry doesn't see you the way you want to be seen. Well, because I don't think you've taken the time to see yourself how you want to be seen. And last thing I'll leave you with today, and I hope this is resonating with you, 
how does waiting and hoping feel versus taking inspired action? Like how much longer are you willing to wait and do nothing for yourself and hope that this magical miracle happens and the dream role for the Oscar or the Emmy lands on your lap without any effort from you other than doing the audition? How much longer are you willing to coast? How much longer are you willing to be on autopilot? And let life happen to you instead of you taking the reins. And this will look different for everybody. For some of you, it'll look like writing something for yourself. But everybody's not a writer. So for some people, some of you, it'll look like collaborating. I don't know. I know for me, hoping didn't get me here. I had to take some inspired action. And I believe once you take the first step, the universe, God just opens doors for you. But it's like you taking that first step of faith in whatever direction that is. Mm, A lot of food for thought, a lot lot for you to chew on. I know, I know, I know you, I hear you talking back to me now. I do. (laughs) And I receive it. And listen, I would love to hear some of your answers. I would love to hear some of your takeaways. Be sure to tag me at actress Christine Horn or tag the podcast at Hollywood Bound Actors. If you're listening, if you're here, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment. I would love to respond. I would love to hear some of your aha, some of your takeaways. You never know how your comment might inspire and help someone else. All right, I'll see you next time. Remember to shine bright, ooh, like the star that you are. Peace.